Hey guys, welcome back to my Reacts, and today we're reacting to something that I haven't done for a while, and that's like military equipment and military style sort of reaction. So we're reacting to why nothing seems to be able to kill the B-52 bomber. I have my own thoughts, uh, probably because of its ability to fly at high altitude, um, and I do know a, a few facts, and I'll let you know throughout the throughout the uh, video what I know about the B-52. I'm pretty sure that some things will be mentioned in here. But I'm really, really excited to learn a little bit more about the B-52, a weapon system that is old yet very up to date at the same time. So uh, let's see what they have to say. This is the US, US, this is US military news channel, which uh, should be quite good, very informative. So guys, if you enjoy this kind of video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel because there's plenty more coming. And there's plenty more you can go back through my catalog of videos and have a look at. Every like, every subscription helps this small channel grow. So thank you very much for your support. And if you want to see like more of my in-depth thoughts on a lot of issues that are currently going on, head over to my Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Uh, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, it's only five pound, uh, five pounds, five dollars per month. And you can also check out my other channel, which is detailing my move to the United States, uh, to Houston, Texas, to be exact, early next year. So if you want to learn more about that and support me over there, head over to the channel. The link is also down below in the description. So let's get to this video. Why nothing seems to kill the B-52 bomber. What an incredible plane. Do you remember when the defense industry could actually build airplanes? Oh yeah, so here's the thing, this, this is the thing. If you notice, look at if you look at it, it has eight engines and they're coupled, so on four separate um, on four separate attachments. Those engines are actually really old and they're actually really inefficient at burning fuel. That's why you'll notice every single B-52 has a trail of exhaust fumes behind it, uh, which you won't really find uh, on like a, a modern day aircraft or a new aircraft, but they don't want to change the engines because they work, basically. Not just build airplanes, but mass produce them in large numbers. Of course you don't. Over time, military aircraft have become so complicated and the defense industries become so impervious to outside forces that you probably weren't born when the United States could actually build tough, reliable, and relatively low-cost airplanes. Look no further than the B-52, also known as the Buff, for big, ugly, fat effort. <laughs> I did not know that. Boeing built more than 700 of the bombers between 1952 and 1962, and the Air Force expects to keep flying the Buff until the 2050s. Wow. That means that a bomber first built during the Truman administration will still be putting warheads on foreheads about the time the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan warheads on foreheads Afghanistan reached their halfway mark. In comparison, the B-1 Lancer and B-2 Spirit, which first flew in the 1980s, are both expected to be retired in the early 2030s, more than a decade earlier than planned, according to Air Force magazine. NASA's space shuttle retired in 2011 after 30 years of service. The SR-71 Blackbird bowed out in 1990 after flying for 24 years. Meanwhile, the service would upgrade 76 B-52s and buy at least 100 new B-21 stealth bombers. The result in the 2040s would be a force of no fewer than 175 bombers composed of factory-fresh B-21s and 80-year-old B-52s. That's crazy. Under any likely scenario, the B-52 endures. Simple, durable, and cheap to operate. Bit of bad connection here. That's annoying. Got new Wi-Fi as well. Should be working really, really well. So the B-52 endures. Simple, durable, and cheap to operate. Okay, it doesn't want to work. B-52s are the are. Air Force's long-range missile haulers. The military does not plan for the old bombers to penetrate enemy defenses during the high-tech war. They instead would launch cruise missiles from beyond the range of air defenses. Incredible. To keep the old bombers viable, the Air Force is spending $32 billion replacing their TF-33 engines, and as part of the combat network communication... Oh, so they are replacing them, okay. ...communications technology upgrade, rewiring their bomb bays for smart weapons. Connect gives the B-52 a digital backbone, enabling air crew to receive digital tasking messages and real-time intelligence and threat data from multiple sources, the Air Force explained. Wow. All crew stations on the aircraft will be digitally linked, enabling information sharing while in flight, 
greatly improving situational awareness and mission flexibility. The goal in replacing the engines is to improve the B-52's fuel efficiency by ah, at least... I told you, they're, they're inefficient by nature, but let's see what they have to say. 20% okay. while maintaining its ceiling and takeoff performance. Mm -hmm. A B-52H with TF-33 engines can carry 35 tons... That's an incredible view from the cockpit. I never thought of it. I never thought of what it'd, be, what it'd look like to see from the cockpit. See those weapons dropping as well and all those engines lined up. Amazing. The bombs and missiles as far as 4,500 miles without wow. aerial refueling at a top speed of 650 miles per hour. Wow. Back in the day, America built things to last. As the longest serving combat aircraft in the U.S. military, the buff proves that when it comes to bells and whistles, less is more. I'm not an engineer, but I'd have to tell you that the folks that built this airplane designed an aircraft that's pretty sturdy, said Air Force Major General Thomas A. Busser. Hmm. Busser leads the 8th Air Force, which is responsible for this service's bomber fleet. Okay. He was born in 1963, the year after the last B-52 was delivered to the Air Force. Originally intended to be America's nuclear bomber, the B-52 oh. gained a new mission with the advent of GPS-guided weapons, close air support. The buff has come to the aid of Look troops in combat in Afghanistan and Iraq with a payload of 70,000 pounds of bombs and missiles. Although the B-52 has been updated over the years, the bomber's core technology... 70,000 pounds, that is 35 tons. That's a 35 ton payload. That's crazy. Dates back to the 1950s and 1960s making it totally unlike the Air Force's newest aircraft, Busser told Task and Purpose on April 20th. Essentially, we're working today with 1960s versions of aircraft that have been modified, like other weapon systems in any service, Busser said. The fact that it served so long and will continue to serve so long is a pretty remarkable statistic. One key to the B-52's longevity is that the bombers pull fewer G-forces than fighters, which are designed to yank and bank, he said. Also, many bombers spent years on alert with Strategic Air Command, the forerunner to U.S. Strategic Command, so they weren't flying many missions. That's amazing. The size of it. Did someone say, let's play global thermonuclear war? <laughs> Despite its age, the B-52 is expected to continue to shoulder the nuclear mission along with the Air Force's newest bomber, the B-21 Raider. The Air Force ultimately plans to buy 100 B-21s, which are expected okay. to begin flying in the mid-2020s. One reason why the B-52 will outlast the newer B-2 is that the U.S. government made a disastrous decision to buy only 20 bombers instead of the 132 B-2s it initially intended to purchase, okay. said retired Air Force Lieutenant General David Deptula, Dean of the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies. For too long, the Air Force and the U.S. Department of Defense has let arbitrary budget levels drive force structure. Oh. It's time to turn that equation around and have the national security strategy drive force structure, Deptula told reporters on Wednesday. Mm. With advancements in fighters and air defense systems, the B-52 can fire standoff conventional and nuclear weapons from a distance without putting itself at risk, Basu That's said. That's crazy, look at the that. The B-1 showed how this can be done during the April 13th strike against Syria by launching cruise missiles at targets while outside Syrian airspace. Well, that's amazing. I mean, amazing for us, terrifying for them, for sure. <laughs> Opening a can of Uwapas on ISIS. <laughs> Look at those. Uh, are the, were those all? Those are all small cruise missiles. Just go. That's incredible. Can of Orpas on ISIS. The power is ridiculous. The B-52 has also proven invaluable to the commanders in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan mm -hmm. because it can carry a lot of fuel and a lot of weapons, so it can loiter for a long time and provide the firepower to get U.S. troops and their allies out of danger. He said. During its 2017 rotation to the Central Command Theater of Operations, the 23rd Bomber Squadron flew 400 consecutive sorties against ISIS and Taliban targets 
before a maintenance issue canceled the mission. Wow. Breaking the B-52's previous record for consecutive missions set during Operation Linebacker 2 in 1972, yeah, according to the U.S. Air Force Central Command. Not to be outdone, the 69th Expeditionary Bomb Squadron flew a total of 834 B-52 missions Whoa. after arriving in theater in September 2017. The record-setting rotations are a testament to the robustness and ruggedness of the B-52. The work Air Force Material Command has done over the decades to maintain the bomber and the dedication of airmen to keep the B-52 flying, Busier said. If you ever have a doubt about the motivation or discipline of an airman, I offer you to go out on the flight line and look in the eyes of a maintainer launching a B-52, Basir said. The B-52 warriors that rotated in and out of the Middle East absolutely crushed their mission. I bet. It's got such a large wingspan, it's got to have landing gear on the end of the wings, that's pretty cool. That is one impressive piece of machinery. I, I've, it's absolutely incredible how it was created so long ago. It's, so it's planned to serve over a hundred years in the US Air Force. That's incredible. Um, so ultimately you will have so many generations flying the same aircraft that are designed. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really impressive. Um, to be able to keep up with modern technology, uh, awesome. Um, yeah, man, I'd love to meet the engineer who designed that because he knew what he was doing. Or she knew what she was doing, if we want to go down that route. But yeah, uh, really, really awesome. Absolutely amazing. I love watching things like this. It gives you like a little insight onto, uh, obviously, they can't tell you absolutely everything because that'd be crazy. I could just be a Russian guy now watching this and uh, taking, you know, getting all the information that I needed, but that's, you know, that's not the case. But um, really, really awesome. Um, I mean, I have complete faith that um, obviously with military spending that's, that's continuing to go, that um, more impressive weapons for the defense of the United States and the Western world will be created. But as long as we've got amazing weaponry like this, amazing aircraft like this, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the important thing. Um, I think people underestimate how important military strength is in keeping peace. Um, because who wants to go up against a country that can deliver that much uh, with with weaponry they have so yeah absolutely awesome guys i hope you guys enjoyed that i genuinely did i really did so let me know if there's anything else similar you want me to react to uh, i think i've done the f-22 raptor before i wonder if there's one on the f-35 that'd be very interesting because the f-35 of course is far newer i'm very sought after uh um well obviously the f-22 uh it will never be sent to any other any other nato country but the f-35 will i wonder why that is but, uh, well, because the F-22 is so sought after because it is the best fighter jet there is, even though it was developed in the 80s. That's very interesting, you know. Sometimes, um, you know, with the, with this with aircraft like this, you know, they can serve for so long and still be at the top of their game. That just shows you how amazing our engineers were back in the 80s, back in the 50s. And they still are now, of course. Uh, so, yeah, really, really cool, guys. Let me know if there's anything else that you think I should react to down in the comments. Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. Also head over to the new channel and my Patreon, which is down, both are down below in the description. It'd be amazing to see you there. Now on Patreon, you can actually subscribe for free. I'm not sure what you can see, um, but you can always try it for free and then choose to subscribe in the future. So let's, let's uh, hopefully I'll see you on both other platforms and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Let me know what else you want me to react to.